Hello and welcome to Rathod's IELTS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 3rd April 2024. So here we are going to take Delhi edition. So whichever edition of Hindu you have, you can use that. There will be no problem in addition. And first of all, you have to learn like how to pick the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And many beginners, they have this problem of selecting articles. And how can you select the articles? So first source is our syllabus. If you have good knowledge on your syllabus and there will be no problem in picking out of articles. And second one is previous questions. So if you have gone through the previous questions like at least 10 years, then you will be knowing like from where UPSC is asking question. So that you will start picking up of right articles from your examination point of view from both prelims and as well as means. Clear? So now let us see the front page. So this is front page of Hindu today. And let us pick out the articles relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, I will let you know the dimensions. And even I will make you understand like how can we connect a single topic with the different subjects. So this multi-dimensional approach will be very useful to write a mains answer and as well as to write a very good essay. Okay. Yes, now let us see the title of this article that is ED can summon anyone for any information. So this is statement not given by me. So it is given by Supreme Court. So Supreme Court says that ED that is enforcement directorate can summon anyone for any information it need. So now let us see the issue here. So the issue is between the collectors of Tamil Nadu and ED and finally this petition went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that yes ED have that power. If you see this infographic you can understand what is the background of this article. So here Supreme Court reprimands district collectors of Vellore, Ariyalur, Karur and Tiruchi in Tamil Nadu for not appearing before investigative agency. So here ED asked this district collectors of Tamil Nadu to come before this agency but they said that because of election so we are not going to come. And now bench, the Supreme Court bench states that section 50 of Prevention of Money Laundering Act, this act which empowered ED to summon any person whose attendance was considered necessary for giving evidence or production of records. Yes, now ED have the power, ED have the power to summon anyone. So this power which is given according to section 50, subclass 2 of Prevention of Money Laundering Act. And district collectors, they express inability to compile data and to present it, the data to ED on time because of poor work and implementation of welfare programs. And bench refuses to accept such arguments. Okay, so this is some background. I hope you understood, right? So before seeing dimensions, I want to announce about this offline and online courses that we are launching in the Stratovers IES. As you all know that we started our offline branch in Ashok Nagar, Hyderabad and new offline batch for prelims come mains 2025 is going to be started from July and admissions are going on only few seats are left. So if you want to take admission, so you can contact me on this number 807-476-5513 and the batch size is very limited, only 70 students per batch because we are providing like one-to-one -one mentorship on every Sunday. On every Sunday student, they have to come and sit with the mentor and to discuss their problems. And apart from that, we are also providing mains answer writing on the day one. And next, prelims test series and prelims practices and as well as previous questions or especially the important focus of this offline course and even we are focusing on one more important thing that is your material so there will be two sets of material like basic and advanced material will be given and apart from that material so we will be also providing like special sessions on current affairs okay so these are the some highlights. So if you want 
to have and to get the admission so please contact us on this number or else you can directly walk into this office which is present at this pillar number 36 opposite vijaya medicals ashok nagar hyderabad and if you can't come to offline and if you can't uh, like spend a time in hyderabad if you are staying in other states you can take online programs that we are offering so online codes of this foundation is just 20000 rupees only you can take that so we are providing a to z what is required for upsc point of view okay so now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about two important things one is ed and next one is prevention of money laundering act so we are discussing about this prevention of money laundering act from last one week so we are going to keep discussion of this pmla aside we are not going to see that so regarding this ed you have to see like what are the important features and what is a mandate and what are the functions and you have to see like in recent days ed is also facing some issues you have to see those issues and challenges okay and you have to see why it is in news i explain the context right and you have to see like what is the present supreme court petition so this issue it is between ed and tamil nadu state collectors so he asked these tamil nadu state collectors to come before ed but they are saying that we didn't compile the data which asked by ed and we are not going to attend why so they are busy for what for electoral polls they are busy for this electoral polls and as well as implementing of schemes so now what supreme court said supreme court says that i am not going to accept this type of things okay i am not going to accept this type of things don't entertain don't entertain with uh, these type of things so supreme court said and said that yes ed have the power to summon anyone according to section 50 sub class 2 of this pmla okay so this is the thing which mainly said and here you can see one more dimension like what is this pmla what is this act is about and when we came up with this act and if you have not watched yesterday's class, so please do watch yesterday's class. We discussed about what is this PMLA, so when it came into force and what are the important organizations or conventions which deals with this money laundering, everything we discussed. So I strongly recommend you to watch yesterday's lecture so that you will be getting great insights regarding this PMLA. And there is a high chance of getting question in your prelims this year regarding this pmla for sure and this topic is important from your gs paper to under quality and the governance and this money laundering topic you will be seeing your gs paper 3 under economy and supreme court is involved here again it is important from gs paper to powers of supreme court Okay, so all these are the different dimensions that you have to see from this article point of view. So now let us see the notes of this article. So why it is a new Supreme Court? Supreme Court endorsed the sweeping powers. It said about the sweeping powers of Enforcement Directorate. And Supreme Court said that this central agency it can call anybody for any information so it is according to section 50 subclass 2 of prevention of money laundering act so one tip i want to give you is if you are a beginner if you don't know like what this article is saying and if you want to know the background just see this infographic so if you see that infographic, you will be getting around 50 to 60 percent of thing what happened regarding history. Okay, so that is very important. 
And if you move on to the details, it says that what is this enforcement directorate? So this enforcement directorate, it is a multidisciplinary organization. So what is it? It is a multidisciplinary organization and this ED which is mandated with investigation of offences. So which offences it will be dealing with? It will be dealing with offences of money laundering and as well as violation of foreign exchange laws. So regarding this foreign exchange laws and money laundering and violations, yes, it is organized, it is a central agency which is dealing with these problems. And this one is it functions under which department? It is very important. Department of Revenue, which comes to the Department of Finance. Okay, it is dealing with money. Money is comes under Revenue and as well as Finance Ministry, right? So in this way, you can remember. And it is a premier financial investigation agency. So what is it? It is a premier financial investigation agency of Government of India. And ED functions in a strict compliance with the constitution and our laws of India. So it works according to our constitution. It works according to the laws which are present in our country. And what is the structure? And where is the headquarters? Headquarters located in Delhi. Okay, and it is headed by Director of Enforcement. And there are even we have like five regional offices. So first one it is at Mumbai. Second one is at Chennai. And third one is at Chandigarh. Fourth one is at Kolkata. And fifth one is at Delhi. So we have five regional offices. And these regional offices, they are headed by Special Directors of Enforcement. And if you are talking about recruitment for this enforcement directorate, so the recruitment of the officers that will be done directly, okay, by drawing officers from other investigation agencies. So from other investigation agencies, the people will be drawn directly and direct appointment will be given. And this AD which comprises of normally IRS officers. So after clearing this uh, UPSC, CS examination, you will be getting this post like, IES, IPS, IRS and other officers, right? So all these people, they are eligible to get employment under this or opportunity under this ED. And if you're talking about what is a tenure, tenure is two years, okay? Tenure is two years, but director's tenure can be extended from two to five years by giving three annual extensions. So there can be three annual extensions. So actually tenure is two years, two plus three is around five years. So the tenure can be given. And here we have Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946 and Central Vigilance Commission Act of 2003. So they have been amended by the government to power to keep these two chiefs their post for one year after have completed their two year of terms. That means for annual extension, so there are some amendments which are mainly done in these acts. So these are the very important facts that you have to remember from this article. And now let us move on to the next article. So in the front page, you can see this image. So this image, it is about Sevian. So actually it is one of my favorite uh, suite and especially during this Ramzan season, so actually, I remember one thing. So morning, early morning at 5 o'clock, uh, like I opened this Hindu and I am like searching the articles. So that time, firstly, I, I saw this image and I, and I got one thing remembered. Okay, during my childhood, actually, uh, we used to see like one of our Muslim friend used to bring uh, like Savior to our home. So actually, on that day, entire our family because I am a uh, I'm a family and I came from a, from a single parent so because of this uh, I used to wait uh, till evening like when he'll come and when he'll bring this savior like that so suddenly I got remember that incident and I want to share with you like like uh, the festivals will be like special okay and on that day we have like some special items that we will be having even though if you are not belonging to that community, like if you are not even celebrating that Ramzan, so if you are having the friends or uh, friends so and so, then also you will be like taking part in that. And this is our example of unity and diversity. 
so one student who came to me and he asked me like even though there are different religions different caste they are present in india so why we are saying like unity and diversity because even though if you are not celebrating the festival of so and so community with other community but we are sharing the happiness yes of course we are sharing the happiness and we are sharing the uh, whatever the thing so that we are saying that india is unity and diversity okay so this is the one thing i want to share with you students and please let me know your experience as well and now let us see the next article it is about israel strike in gaza seven aid workers killed in israeli strike in gaza so actually we are going to see this topic in detail because there is a very high chance of getting question regarding israel especially from your map based question from geography so actually if you see the trend in 2022 there was question regarding afghanistan and its boundary countries and 2020 there is the question regarding ukraine and its border countries and this year 2024 you can get a question regarding israel and its border countries or important places in this israel to arrange them from east to west or west to east or north to south or south to north so in this any way you can expect question from israel for sure okay so if you prepare this and you can keep two points in your two marks in your pocket okay and we are going to see this article in detail with the article which is present in editorial so that's all with the front page and in the city page i found nothing much important and if you go on to the state page so most of the articles are political articles because of election so don't go through that so they will not bring you anything okay so let us move directly on to this editorial page so not even a single article is important in your state page today okay so first let us see this article that is poll campaigns in india must reflect climate issues so this article is very important and interesting because it is saying about one important report so whenever any report which is coming in the newspaper and that to in editorials you have to make a note of data which is given that report and we are going to see that report so the name of that report is the state of global climate okay so it is released by world meteorological organization so world meteorological organization released this report that is the state of global climate report so now we are going to see that in detail okay let's talk me about the state of the state of global it is talking about the state of global climate report so here whenever any report is in news you have to collect this information so first one is which is the organization releasing that report that is world meteorological organization that is wmo and apart from this you have to see what are the highlights and you have to make note of highlights and even you have to see like what are the issues which are said in that report and even you have to see like what are the challenges so why i am talking about challenges so if there is any report which is saying about highlights and issues it will be also giving its recommendations it will be also giving its recommendations and many a times we will be not implementing that recommendations that means we have to see what are the challenges to implement those recommendations so i mean that so this article is important from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and this topic is at most important from your mains not from your prelims but prelims also you can get a question by chance like recently the state of global climate report is in news which organization released that so in this way you can expect question that is by wmo world meteorological organization clear and now let us see this article in detail so let us move on to this notes part 
So here recently World Meteorological Organization has released State of Global Climate 2023 report. Okay, additionally here we are also facing like some incidents like climate change related incidents, right? Actually this report which is saying that there is increasing of heat where in world oceans so in world's oceans so there is increased heat content and because of this increasing of heat in this oceans that is having impact on weather and as well as climate hazards so weather impacts and climate hazards are increasing day by day for example we are seeing food security issues population displacement and impact on the vulnerable population so these are the some issues that we are facing because of increasing of world ocean temperature so let us have a look on the highlights of this report so first this report is saying that there is increasing of ocean heat content okay so this report actually is saying that there is increasing of ocean heat content because of anthropogenic factors that is human activities like for example increasing of greenhouse emissions and because of changing in the pattern of land use because of changing in the pattern of land use and as well as because of greenhouse gas emissions yes we can see there is increasing of ocean heat content and second important point is contrasting heating and cooling patterns in the north atlantic so in the north atlantic ocean the majority of this world's ocean they are experiencing warming and relatively especially in some small regions like sub polar north atlantic ocean so they are experiencing cooling that means so there is some areas you are facing heating and some areas you are facing cooling so because of this it is also causing some climate change and next one is global average sea surface temperature that means if you say average that means across the globe on average the surface of this sea temperatures they are recorded high in 2023 and exceptional heating is seen in various regions especially is not atlantic regions gulf of mexico caribbean region north pacific and in the areas of uh, southern re southern ocean so in all these areas we can see there is extensive heating or exceptional heating is happening and next one is marine heat wave and ocean acidification so if we're talking about marine heat waves and ocean acidification the global ocean which experienced an average daily marine heat wave coverage of 32 percentage well above the previous record of 23 percentage in 2016 in 2016 if you see this heat waves and ocean acidification which is seen 23 percentage but this 23 had been reversed okay the number had been reversed to 32 percentage in year 2023 and at the end of 2023 the most of global ocean between 20 degrees south and 20 degrees north which had been in heat wave conditions since early november and apart from this the global mean near sea surface temperature okay the global mean near the sea surface temperature in 2023 was 1.45 plus or minus 0.12 degree centigrade which is above pre-industrial levels okay from 1850 to 1900 average so in this way this report is saying that overall there is increasing of sea temperature near sea temperature and as well as inside ocean temperature etc and what happens so whenever there is increasing of temperature automatically that will leads to melting of glaciers or retreating retreating means nothing but for example the size of the glacier is this much but it had been decreased to this much so whenever the size of glacier is decreasing so this event is called as glacial retreat or retreating of glacier so here that will leads to accelerating or increasing of glacial retreat and antarctic sea ice loss will be happening so glaciers across the world that is glaciers worldwide experience the largest loss of ice on record and it is driven by extreme melting in both western northern america and as well as europe region 
so there is increasing of sea loss that will be happen in this north america as well as europe and antarctic sea ice extent reached an absolute record low for the satellite era so what happens to so antarctic sea ice is starting like a uh, like melting okay so that what happened now we can see like record low of satellite era and arctic sea ice extent remain well below the normal so according to the normal levels but it is not staying in the normal because of this warming and because of increasing of temperature so there is decreasing of this ice content in our both poles region and because of this what happened increasing of oceanic heat or because of temperature because of melting of glaciers obviously it is having impact on the social economic life of people so let us see what is the social economical impact of this climatic hazards and weather change so first one is it will lead to food insecurity extreme weather events like for example floods for example droughts and storms that will leads to crop and livestock production losses so in this way it will be exacerbates the food insecurity globally so food insecurity which happens because of floods droughts and seasonal rainfall etc and acute food insecurity is more than doubled from 149 million people affected before covid 19 this number had been increased to 333 million in 2023 because of food insecurity because of weather change or climate change and next one is population displacement so displacement is happening in the different regions like syria lebanon jordan iraq egypt somalia pakistan where communities they are already vulnerable to conflict because of previous climate related events so recently pakistan affected with floods yes or no i am giving that example so that you can understand what is happening and these displacements they strain even resources and even that will exacerbate social tensions and that will contribute to inability in this affected regions so next one is economic losses so these losses include like damage to infrastructure there will be like damage to infrastructure and agriculture product will be affected and even there will be livelihood loss so all these are three important things that you have to see that will leads to economic loss and because of the destruction of agriculture areas due to flooding and storms as well as disruption of supply chains that will hinders economic recovery and even that exacerbates poverty in affected regions and apart from that if you are talking about inequality migration displacement due to climatic related shocks and stress that affects the people livelihood so in this way here whenever people livelihood is also affected whenever there is increasing of inequality then we cannot achieve our sustainable development goals okay so these are some important things that you have to remember from this article and because of this report and because of this impact now we are going to have elections in this 2024 right so in this election campaigns so here leaders they have to focus on how to address this issue of climate change so this is the idea behind this article clear and now let us see the next topic that is about the gaza war needs a smart exit strategy so this article is talking about what is the exit strategy for this israel and this palestine conflict so this article is very interesting so here what are the things that you have to see here there are many people who are involved here so let me explain you so this article it is about israel israel palestine issue okay so let us see like the reason so you have to see the reasons reasons why Israel and Palestine they are in conflict so there are three important reasons you have to know and apart from that you have to see like it is almost 6 months had been completed okay regarding this Israel Palestine issue and you have to see what is the outcome in these 6 months so this is the first important thing and next one is you have to see map of Israel 
and bordering countries, water bodies, and important places, etc. And next one is you have to see like international communities which are involved. So US and UK, they are supporting Israel. Earlier, but now what happened? So US is silent. Okay, so why silent? In United Nations Security Council, recently resolution had been passed. So this resolution is about stopping of violence. It is saying that to stop violence, especially because this is Ramzan season, and as soon as possible, cease fire should be maintained and hostilities should be released. So this is the resolution which had been passed. But in this resolution, US is silent. So again, now what is happening is restraining of relations between US and Israel. So actually US and Israel, they had visit, like Israel want to visit US, Washington, but this had been stalled. Okay, as of now it is put on hold because of US abstained noting. Okay, US abstain in voting. So this is the one area that you have to see. And if you see from this Palestine or Gaza point of view, so here Hamas, Hamas they are supporting and even Iran, Yemen is supporting. Okay. And here you have to see like what is this two state solution and one more area you can think like so how can we establish how can we establish peace in this region so all these things are clearly said in this article so we are going to see all these dimensions okay and this topic is important from international relations which comes under GS paper too. And even you can expect map based question your prelims from GS paper 1 geography. Clear? Now let us see this article in detail. So on 25th March. There was finally some good news in the outgoing conflict of Gaza. So what happened here is United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution. And this resolution is demanding immediate ceasefire. It is demanding immediate ceasefire in Gaza during Ramadan. And even this resolution also asked for immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. So all hostages should be released and even we can come up with immediate ceasefire in this Gaza. And this was the United Nations Security Council's first successfully passed resolution because earlier they used to pass but here in this United Nations Security Council the problem is in this United Nations Security Council we have two types of members. So one is permanent members and another is temporary members. So these permanent members are five countries. Normally we would call them as P5 countries and these P5 countries they use veto power. So why this had been passed now because here US abstained from voting. So finally this resolution had been passed. Okay, so whatever resolution which had been passed, even though this is non-binding, it still can continue what it is doing in Gaza and making a mockery of whole process in United Nations Security Council. And on the side, even Hamas. Hamas, they initially welcomed this resolution of ceasefire. But on the next day itself, on March 26th, Mahamas reiterated that position on permanent ceasefire accompanied by complete withdrawal of Israel forces from Gaza. So here Hamas said that we this completely Israeli forces they have to withdraw from Gaza. So as a result the initial euphoria and hopes for an early ceasefire 
have very quickly turned into a back of square one position so because of this events so whatever the good thing that we thought so that happiness had not been remained for the long time so with no assurance that the cease fire will actually take shape the focus is now back to joint effort so other countries like egypt and qatar so these countries they are separately mediating and negotiating for the early cease fire and reports there also says that israel targeting southern lebanon and even started killing civilians and hezbollah has been intensified its missile strikes in this northern israel so because of this it is inflicting damage to key military assets and loss of lives and even on other side here houthis houthis in this south continue to disrupt and block israeli us british ships and red sea causing heavy economic losses for israel and its allies and even if you see the recent estimates of deaths in gaza so because of this israel's attack in this gaza it resulted in loss of around 30 to 1000 lives in gaza so why israel started this war because of three important objectives so first one is first important one is to eliminate hamas okay and next one is to get back its hostages and this one is to flatten gaza so these are the three important objectives why israel started war the first one is to flatten gaza that means to uh, make this gaza to be inhabitable and this one is to eliminate hamas and next one is to get back its hostages and with war well into the 6 months now we have to see like what are the outcomes of this war so yes israel flattened this gaza in fact like badly it had been affected this gaza okay so there are number of reports saying that gaza will be virtually uninhabitable for years that much damage it has seen in this gaza and as well as israel has also in the past few weeks flattened kilometer wide stretch along the border with the gaza so that that area will be acting as a buffer zone later and second one is destruction of hamas the best estimate says that israel has succeeded in eliminating only 30% of estimated 30000 hama fighters so out of this 30000 hama fighters they killed around 30% each and for hamas it is a question of two clear objectives so first one here is to remind the world that while talks of normalization and reconciliation between israel and arab world that could go the cause of palestinian state could not be lost sight of so always hamas says that you have to keep in mind whenever you are coming up with mediation or reconciliation you have to think what is the cause for this palestinian state and its one is here hamas wants to expose to the world and especially its supports base okay so in this way we have to think like it is very easy to start the war but it is very difficult to decide when and how to call off it to come out of that war cease fire often occurs more due to stalemate situations or international pressure but achieving this objectives will not bring the end so this is the thing which mainly said and what are the options that are present for israel here is so they can go for early cease fire and they can go for withdrawal of forces from this gaza strip and they can use like recently flattened 1 km strip along this gaza border as surveillance come buffer zone and 24 by 7 surveillance they can go for and to prevent recurrence of another 7th october that could be a possibility like they can go for increasing of surveillance okay and on hostages hamas would most likely to agree an exchange of hostages so in this way they can come up with this solution for this issue clear and i like this article most which clearly explain what and what and this sea is image okay so here we have mediterranean sea and this is our what israel and here the small strip it is having access to this mediterranean sea this gaza strip and this part is our west bank okay and here we have some important regions like haifa and we have tel aviv ashdod 
Bashirat. Okay, and here we have Dead Sea, and this is Jordan River, and here we have Sea of Galilee. So these are some important things that you have to see, and you have to see like which are the countries sharing boundary with Israel. We have Egypt, Jordan, and here we have Syria. Okay, here we have Lebanon, and here we have Golan Heights. The Golan Heights is also present here. So it is also one conflict area. Clear and now let us see the next topic. It is about is Kachatiwu Islet disputed? So if you see from last three days onwards, we are seeing this article of Kachatiwu is in news. But why? So this Kachatiwu is in news because our Prime Minister he made one controversial statement. So what is this controversial statement is about? So he said that Congress gave this Kachatiwu Island to Sri Lanka. So this is the one controversial statement which made by Prime Minister. So because of this Kachatiu Island is in news. So this article is imported from GS paper 1 geography and even from GS paper 2 under international relations. Clear? And now let us see the context. Prime Minister brought up the controversial matter of Kachatiu ahead of Lok Sabha elections in Tamil Nadu accusing of Congress giving it away. So now let us see the details in 1974 Prime Ministers that is Indira Gandhi and Bandaranike signed agreement. So this agreement which is about defining the boundary between India and Sri Lanka and finally this Kachatiu Islands which is placed under Sri Lankan control. So finally the ended negotiations which had dating back to 1921 onwards. So actually this island is important because traditionally the fishermen of Tamil Nadu, they will be using this island, okay, especially for fishing purpose. And later on in 1976, uh, we came with the pact, that pact restricted the movement of this Indian fishermen into this Kachatiu island and also restricted fishing area in this uh, region without express permission okay so this is the issue here and if you move on and let us see the map so this part is tamil nadu here we have rameshwaram and this is sri lanka and here we have jaffna and we have park strait and this island is kachatiu island which is in news okay and next topic it is about will india experience more heat wave days this summer this is a question. Yes, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Whether you are feeling hot or like moderate? Tell me. Okay, tell me your uh, experience in the comment box. So, how many of you are going to non-AC study halls in the summer season? Okay, please let me know. So, now let us see this article and actually this article background which is seen in yesterday's newspaper that IMD came up with the details. It said that we are going to have heat waves more in this summer season. So now let us see the details. Why it is in news? IMD that is Indian Meteorological Department predicts above average heat wave days. Okay. So we are predicting that there will be above average heat wave days for, for India impacting the multiple regions. That will be impacting multiple regions. So if you see details, it says that El Nino event. So this year we have El Nino. Because of this, it is contributing to warmer temperature globally and also exaggerating the heat wave conditions in India. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said. And the key factor for this intensing of heat waves is El Nino. And if you see here, general elections in India coincide with summer season and also potential heat waves. So here. It is also prompting election commission to issue advisories to manage the impact of heat waves during this voting. And now let us see some facts regarding these heat waves. So heat waves are like prolonged periods of excessively hot weather. And these heat waves, they can cause adverse impacts on human health and as well as environment and the economy. And in India, being a tropical country, it is particularly vulnerable to heat waves. So these heat waves which have become more frequent and intense in the recent areas. So in the recent years or recent times, there is increasing of intensity and as well as frequency of heat waves. 
And if you see the criteria of IMD for declaring heat wave in India, so heat wave is considered as maximum temperature of a station which reaches at least 40 degrees centigrade for plains and at least 30 degrees or for more for this hilly regions. And if you're talking about based on the departure from normal, so heat wave is nothing but like more 4.5 degrees to 6.4 degrees centigrade and severe heat wave is nothing but whenever there is an increasing of temperature, it is more than 6.4 degree centigrade to normal. Okay, so this is about this. And if you see heat wave condition is like whenever there is an actual maximum temperature is more than 45 degree centigrade and severe is more than 47 degree centigrade. So these are the some important facts that you have to see from this article point of view. And now let us go back to our Hindu. And let us see if there are any articles relevant from our examination point of view or not. So I discussed these text and context, these two articles. And this news page, there is no article, it is important. And leave this election page. Yes, here you can see one article that is amid friction India US plan high level visit this month. So here after visit, we are going to see like what are the important things they talked. Okay, so this article is important from India US relations from GS paper to under international relations. And if you are seeing this business page, there is one important article. So here title says India risking demographic dividend. So actually in 2011 geography, uh, there was one question like what is this demographic dividend? That means working age people from 15 to 64 years, they comes under demographic dividend and India is enjoying this demographic dividend and this topic it is from age pyramids. Okay. I recorded this uh, prelims previous questions of geography 2011 and 2012. So do watch those videos also. And we are going to complete till 2023 as soon as possible. Okay. So here World Bank is saying that South Asian region including India was not making use of demographic dividend as pace of job creation in the region which has been fell short of growth in working age group of population. And even it is 6 to 6.1 percentage growth for 2024 to 2025. But this region which is not providing employment opportunities. So this World Bank report is saying that there is increasing of unemployment rate. So because of this we are not efficiently using this demographic dividend. So if we are not using this demographic dividend efficiently then this is going to become demographic disaster. Okay. So this is the thing that you have to see. And here you have to see like what are the reasons for increasing of unemployment okay and here you can see one more article that is india's new ev policy allows imports from any country even including china so you have to see what is this new ev policy so these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper okay so by this i'm concluding and I want to show like where exactly you can get the notes of this class. So this is our Rathod's IS classes telegram channel. So do join this channel and we are posting the important updates of classes and as well as the notes which is given in the PDF format. You can download the notes. Okay. So that's it. And this is our Rathod's IS Academy YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to this channel so that you will be getting lots and lots of important videos regarding your preparation so that we will make your preparation simple. And this is our website, Rathod's IS Academy website. And if you want to take any online course and prelims is approaching very near. And if you have any doubt regarding any subject, so you can take the single subject courses also that we are providing in this Rathod's IS. And the price of this single subject is less than 3000 rupees. Okay, so for that, if you want to watch the demo videos, you can watch the demo videos without paying a single penny. And after watching demo videos only, you can go for purchasing of codes. 
and if you have any queries regarding the courses that we are offering you can call me on this number 8074765513 and one more thing is we are providing free study space till your prelims and you can come and you can study many students are coming and utilizing that space so come to this offline if you are present in this ashok nagar you can come to this offline branch and you can use this study space that's all for today thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like share and do subscribe to rathod's is academy